in mercy gathered, mended and whole, empty-handed but not forsaken, I've been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Ooh, oh, oh, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. I want to share with you this morning a reflection from uh, the Moody Church in Chicago, Illinois. 
as they remembered uh, September the 11th, 2001. We all know where we were when the towers fell 15 years ago today. The magnitude of our loss was staggering. 2,996 were killed in the attacks and over 6,000 were injured. But the heroism displayed that day was equally amazing as 414 emergency workers died trying to save lives. On his 15th anniversary of 9-11, let us stop for a moment to remember. Let us pray for all those who lost loved ones and for whom today is a heartbreaking anniversary. But let us also thank God for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who gave their lives to help save others. And let us praise God that even in the darkest times, we can trust God's sovereignty and sustaining hand. Will you pray with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, this morning we come together to worship you and to honor you and to praise you. We thank you, Lord, that we can bring our weaknesses and our failings and our shortcomings and our brokenness to you and that you will pick them up and make us whole again and make us new again. We're grateful, Lord, for your amazing grace. That you were able to save a wretch such as I. We thank you, Lord, for your overwhelming love in the midst of all the challenges and circumstances of life. And this morning, as we reflect for just a moment on the tragedy of September the 11th in 2001, and even though it was some 15 years ago, we still remember. We remember the lives of those who are lost. We, we remember the loved ones who are suffering and grieving today. We remember, Lord, those that are facing health issues and challenges because of their desire to run into danger instead of running away from danger in order to save lives. We thank you, Lord, for the bravery and their sacrifice of those who gave their lives to help others. And this morning, Father, we praise you, knowing that even in the darkest times of life, that we can trust you. We can trust your sovereignty. And, Father, we can rest in your sustaining hand as you lift us up and you set us on a rock, a sure-footed place. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever asked, has anyone ever asked you, what are you doing here? Have you ever been into a place and, 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 and you're kind of like, oh, I don't know exactly what's going on, this is my first time, and, and so you're standing there trying not to look obvious, but the more you try not to look obvious, the more obvious you look, and then someone comes up to you and says, well, what are you doing here? You ever been in that type of situation? Uh, have you ever asked yourself the question, what am I doing here? Have you ever asked yourself the question, what's my purpose in life? Um, after all, none of us asked to be born, but here we are. And, and do you know the reason why? God created you. Do you know the reason why God has placed you here 
in this moment of time. You see, God didn't create you so that you could um, run after your career. God did not create you so that you could make enough money so that you could live a satisfying and comfortable and luxurious life. God did not create you so that you could spend your time and your money on your hobbies. God did not create you so that you could develop a five-year plan and, and know what you're going to do five years from now or ten years from now or twenty years from now. Listen to this. God created you and me to worship him. God created you to worship Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man. We were made to praise the name of the Lord. Now you may say, wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute, Wes. Uh, Christianity is not my religion. I'm not a Jesus follower. So you see, it, it really doesn't apply to me. Uh, I, I wasn't really created to, to give praise to Jesus because I don't follow him. But yes, you do. Yes, it does. We owe Jesus everything. We owe Jesus our life. We owe Jesus our allegiance. And whether we realize it or not, the fact is, the truth is that we, each one of us, owe Jesus our life. The scripture tells us way back in the book of Genesis that God formed the world by his voice. God spoke it. And it, and it tells us as we read in the book of Genesis how on each, each day, each segment of, of days, God created something. And then we read in the, in the gospel of John and it says that, John says that Jesus was there in the beginning with God and Jesus was God and without Jesus, not anything was made that was made. We owe Jesus everything. And we can build our life on that truth that we owe Jesus, that we're here to praise him, and we are here to glorify him, or we can continue to build our life on that sinking sand of our personal opinions about God. This is what I think God is. This is what I think God wants. This is, this is you know, how I think about God. We can build our lives on our own opinion and, and sink down, or we can build our life on the truth that God is worthy of our praise. And just as God's angels were created to worship him, so are we. And so are you and so am I. Jesus is not an earthly king. Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is worthy of all of our praise and all of our honor and all of our glory. And this is the reality that we were born into. This is the reality that we were brought into by no choice of our own. It wasn't something that we decided to do. But this is, this is what real life is all about. Here we are. Here we are this morning. And there he is. There he is. As the one who put us here in this place today. The angels did not choose to be created. Neither did we. But as the saying goes, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And therefore, we would be wise to accept reality. Rather to live in denial. And the reality is that we were created, that we are here today, that we are, are, are here on this earth. To worship God and to praise him and to glorify him but you say I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to worship God I don't want to worship Jesus you say I have plans for today I have things that I need to do I have places I need to go people I need to see and, and, and I really don't have time on a Sunday morning or 
a Sunday evening to come and to worship God, the one who has given life. And of course you don't want to worship him. Uh, you never will. You never will. Until God's spirit of praise is imparted into your life. And I am referring to, 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 to the Holy Spirit. I am referring to the third person of the Trinity. And when the Holy Spirit comes, and dwells inside of us, our inner being becomes a cathedral of praise. A cathedral of praise. When the Holy Spirit enters into our life and, and we receive Jesus Christ, we are filled with unending praise to the Lord. We give him praise and honor and glory unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. We, we literally become a new person when the Holy Spirit enters into our life and we have that life-changing experience. We have new priorities. And then we have a, a spirit of praise in our heart for our King. And it's not like we even have to be told to do it. Oh yeah, but praise the Lord right now. Praise the Lord, uh, you know, uh, 10 minutes into the service. It's not like we have to be told to do it. It's not like we have to be told you need to sing or you need to praise the Lord. It just starts to happen naturally. Or should I say, say supernaturally. The Holy Spirit is within us and we give glory and honor to the Lord because of what he has done. He has created us. He has placed us here. He has given us our family and our friends. He has given us our career. He has given us our health. He has given us time on this earth. And so we don't have to be told to praise God. We just do. Here's an example. We're going to praise God right now through song. I want you to sing with me. Here we go. Is it going? Should be. Let's stand. We're going to stand. Debbie, you come and... Uh, Jamie, I want you to come. Courtney, you're going to come. We're going to come and just we're going to give praise to the Lord. Here we are. We're going to sing God is so good. Let's so sing it. Good. Here we go. Go ahead. Right here. Very easy.
may be seated. You, you see, you can resist the Holy Spirit. You can resist the Holy Spirit. When that song, we, the way that I had it planned was I was going to give the cue and the song would play and we would just, you know, just go right, go right into worship. But you see, when we try to worship as the Lord would have us to worship, there's always the evil one <laughs> that seeks to keep us from worshiping as we should. The Holy Spirit leads us to worship and we can resist the Holy Spirit. We can choose not to sing. Maybe you just chose not to sing just a few moments ago. And it wasn't because, because you didn't want to. It was, because it was the Holy Spirit was leading you to sing. And you just chose not to. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we can, we, we, we can choose to follow the Holy Spirit. We can choose to yield to the Spirit. Or we can dig our heels in and live our own life. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we can repent of our sin and we can accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Or we can continue to live without any or all of this. Or we can surrender our emotions and our will to the Lord. We absolutely, every one of us, absolutely needs Jesus' forgiveness. The Bible tells us, and we talked a little bit about this on Wednesday night, we sharing the gospel with someone. We, we pick up the gospel and we, and we can share it with them. And in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned, for all have missed the mark, for all have fallen short of God's glory, for all have missed God's purpose in life, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then we read on in Romans 6 that the wages of sin not only have we sinned, but it's something that we've worked at. You know, we've worked at sinning. And the wages of sin is death and separation. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we have that gift, and how do we get that gift? And we, we read on in, in Romans chapter 5, and it says that this is, this is the gift. This is where it came from. But God demonstrated his love toward us. God showed us how much he loved us in that while we were still sinners, while we were still enemies with God, while we were still separated from God, while we still didn't know God, Christ died for us. That's the gift. How do I receive that gift? In Romans 10, 9 and 10, in verse 13, it talks about how that we make confession with our mouths, the Lord Jesus how we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. Verse 13 says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We absolutely need salvation. We absolutely need our sins to be forgiven. But that in, its, in and of itself doesn't guarantee that we will bow the knee to the majesty of God. Not yet. This morning my text is from uh, Romans chapter 14. Just one verse is going to be up there on the screen. But it, 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 it summarizes the message this morning. Summarizes what it is that I'm trying to say today. And in Romans 14 verse 11 Paul writes. He says, as surely as I live says the Lord. Every knee will bow before me and every tongue will confess to God the day will come when we will all bow the knee before the Lord and if you currently you know you're refusing to do that and you say no that's not for me I don't want to surrender to the, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ you are one of many who are in the same predicament you see, it is human pride, human pride that resists receiving God's spirit of praise. It's human pride that keeps us from following the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our life. It's, it's, it's human pride that keeps us from doing what we know we ought to do, but we don't do it because we are too proud to do it. Too proud. Human arrogance praises 
the achievements of humanity instead. Human pride keeps us from praising the Lord as we should, but it doesn't stop us from praising the achievements of humanity. This evening, today, Sunday, September the 11th, football season begins. I'm wearing my New England Patriots tie. The reason why we're not having church tonight is because the Patriots are on TV. <laughs> not really. But I know somebody thinks that. How many, how often this evening today when our team plays the Los Angeles Rams, oh wait a minute, I mean the, the St. Louis Rams, oh wait a minute, they, they move. When our team plays today, how many of us are going to jump up and down in front of that box? <laughs> Bradley. In front of that box. That's not even real. Not even real. We'll hit it, knock it, talk to it, scream at it. How often times do we get so stirred up when someone tries to take advantage of us? Right? Somebody, somebody does something they shouldn't do, and man, we're right there. Yesterday afternoon, Courtney and I went to Botsky. I shouldn't tell you the name of the place. We went to a coffee shop that wasn't Dunkin' Donuts. And, uh, and, and I got an iced caramel mocha. And it was terrible. It was terrible. Uh, Courtney's drink and my drink cost almost $10. And so I went back. I said, this is terrible. And I tried to explain to them how you make an iced caramel mocha. I don't think they appreciated my instruction. But how often do when we get stirred up, we say something? How often when our team is winning, we say something? How often do we go on and go about um, uh, heralding all of our successes? But we don't even grunt for Jesus. We don't even grunt for Jesus. We don't say anything for Jesus. It's so natural for us to worship our own achievements. It's so supernatural to worship God. And this all points to the fact that we all, every one of us, needs a supernatural encounter with the living God. It, it, it shows us and tells us that we need a transformation. There's not a single one of us who is capable of worshiping God in spirit and in truth on our own. Not until the Holy Spirit first comes and takes up residence inside of us. And that happens when we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, and that's when the true praises begin. That's when it all starts to flow. That's when it becomes like a, like, like a waterfall that you just can't hold back. There is not one of us who is so super spiritual that we just start to do that on our own. It, it doesn't work that way. There's a divine exchange that needs to that needs to take place. We need to hand God our sin. And we hand God our life. And he freely forgives us on account of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit comes in. And it takes a miracle for that to happen. And it doesn't matter how close you are to God or how far away that you are from God this morning. It doesn't matter. It's the same miracle that takes place. The same miracle that, that takes place. And those miracles of people coming to Jesus are taking place all over the world right now. Right now in this moment, in this hour, there are thousands of people all over the world that are coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And the praise of God is flowing like a river through their lives. Don't you know that when people come to know the Lord, when they, when they pass from death unto life, but they praise God. And we who are living and alive in Jesus Christ, we ought to praise God as well. Will you become one of them? Or will you say no to Jesus? Nope. Not going to praise you, Lord. Not going to praise you, not today. And sit right where I'm at. I'm not going to worship. I'm going to be here, but I'm not going to worship. 
Not going to confess my sin. In fact, I don't even think I have sinned this week. There's a sin. I don't want to enter in a relationship with you. I don't want you to be my friend. Sound familiar? I mentioned last week in, in, in service, I said, you know, I can't understand, I still don't understand how it is that anyone in the United States of America does not know who Jesus is and does not accept him. I don't know how that is. There are churches everywhere. On this road, there are about four churches. Turn on the TV, it's all over the TV. How is it that, that people do not come and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? And, and I mentioned that last week, and as, after the service was over, someone said to me, I know the answer. And Bonnie, I think you said it was Ephesians 2, verse 2. And I looked it up, and this is what Ephesians 2, verse 2 says. It says, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. That's the answer. Why don't people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? It is because the spirit of the evil one is at work in people's lives and it covers their eyes and they can't see the light. People refuse Jesus because the evil one is at work in their heart. Just because you were created to worship Jesus doesn't mean that you got the memo. Doesn't mean that you understand that. or It doesn't mean that you will respond graciously to God's kind offer. If you don't want Jesus in your life, there will be plenty of others who will gladly receive the one that you are determined to reject. I really hope you meet Jesus today. There's nothing like having a relationship with the very one who created your body and soul and spirit. And you won't know what that waterfall is like inside of you. You won't know what it's like to praise the Lord spontaneously until God places his spirit inside of you. And the only person, the only obstacle standing in the way of that cathedral of praise is you. The only object that is keeping you from, from that cathedral of praising the Lord in all circumstances and in all situations is you. No wonder Jesus needed to die for us. We are so incredibly stubborn. We are so incredibly self-reliant. We are so incredibly resistant to change and allowing God to save us from ourselves. What will it be? What will you do? We were made for a purpose. We were created to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Life becomes rich and full as we discover and li live out God's purpose for our lives. What will you do this morning? Do you hear the Spirit of God speaking to you? How will you respond? Don't let your pride, your arrogance, your anxiousness, your uncertainty, your fear, get in the way of doing what the Lord is leading you to do this morning. Will you stand?